Okay, we're on the second part of the chapter called Escape. So we know Wilbur, uh, because the goose told, uh, was able to get out of the fence, broke through a loose board. And he's been noticed. Mrs. Zuckerman saw him from the kitchen window and immediately shouted for the men. Homer, she cried. Pigs out, larvae, pigs out. Homer, larvae, pigs out. He's down there under the apple tree. Now the trouble starts, thought Wilbur. Now I'll catch it. The goose heard the racket and she too started hollering. Run, run, run downhill. Make for the woods, the woods, she shouted to Wilbur. They'll never, never, never catch you in the woods. The cocker spaniel heard the commotion and he ran out from the barn to join the chase. Mr. Zuckerman heard and he came out of the machine shed where he was mending a tool. Lurvy, the hired man, heard the noise and came up from the asparagus patch where he was pulling weeds. Everybody walked toward Wilbur and Wilbur didn't know what to do. The woods seemed a long ways off and anyway, he had never been down there in the woods and he wasn't sure he'd like it. Get around behind him, Lurvy, said Mr. Zuckerman and drive him towards the barn and take it easy. Don't rush him. I'll go get a bucket of slops. I got to tell you, when I lived on the farm as a kid, sometimes our animals would get out and it was a problem. You did not want your animals out because they could totally get away. And uh, yeah, if you weren't really careful, you could uh, scare them and make them run further. And one thing I remember my dad always doing is he did always get some food, something that would make the animals want to come back. So he always got a pail of like shelled corn. Um, that's what our pigs would eat. I remember that. But it is something everybody kind of needs to help. And they are. The news of Wilbur's escape spread rapidly among the animals of the place. Whenever any creature broke loose on Zuckerman's farm, the event was of great interest to the others. The goose shouted to the nearest cow that Wilbur was free, and soon all the cows knew. Then one of the cows told one of the sheep, and soon all the sheep knew. The lambs learned about it from their mothers. The horses in their stalls in the barn pricked up their ears when they heard the goose hollering, and soon the horses had caught on to what was happening. Wilbur's out, they said. Every animal stirred and lifted its head and became excited to know that one of his friends had got free and was no longer penned up or tied fast. Wilbur didn't know what to do or which way to run. It seemed as though everybody was after him. If this is what it's like to be free, he thought, I believe I'd rather be penned up in my own yard. The cocker spaniel was sneaking up from him on one side. Lurvy, the hired man, was sneaking up from him on the other side. Mrs. Zuckerman stood ready to head him off if he started for the garden, and now Mr. Zuckerman was coming down toward him carrying a pail. This is really awful, thought Wilbur. Why doesn't Fern come? He began to cry. The goose took command and began to give orders. Don't just stand there, Wilbur. Dodge about, dodge about, cried the goose. Skip around, run toward me, slip in, out, in and out, in and out. Make for the woods, twist and turn. The cocker spaniel sprang for Wilbur's hind leg. Wilbur jumped and ran. Lurvy reached out and grabbed. Mrs. Zuckerman screamed at Lurvy. The goose cheered for Wilbur. Wilbur dodged between Lurvy's legs. Wilbur, Lurvy missed Wilbur and grabbed the spaniel instead. Nicely done, nicely done, cried the goose. Try it again, try it again. Enjoy the picture. <laughs> Run downhill, suggested the cows. Run toward me, yelled the gander. Run uphill, cried the sheep. Turn and twist, honked the goose. Run and dance, said the rooster. I'm going to read and move my recording as I go shut off that noisy thing here. Look out for Lurvy, cried the cows. Look out for Zuckerman, yelled the gander. Watch out for the dog, cried the sheep. Listen to me, listen to me, screamed the goose. Sorry about the noise. Poor Wilbur was dazed and frightened by this hullabaloo. He didn't like being the center of all this fuss. He tried to follow the instructions of his friends, but he couldn't run downhill and uphill at the same time, and he couldn't twist and turn while he was jumping and dancing, and he was crying so hard he could barely see anything that was happening. 
After all, Wilbur was a very young pig, not much more than a baby, really. He wished Fern were there to take him in her arms and comfort him. When he looked up and saw Mr. Zuckerman standing quite close to him, holding a pail of warm slops, he felt relieved. He lifted his nose and sniffed. Wheat middlings, warm milk, potato skins, Kellogg's cornflakes, and a popover left from the Zuckerman's breakfast. Calm pig, said Mr. Zuckerman, tapping the pail. Calm pig. Wilbur took a step toward the pail. No, 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 said the goose. It's the old pail trick, Wilbur. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. He's trying to lure you back into captivity. -ivity. He's appealing to your stomach. Wilbur didn't care. The food smelled appetizing. He took another step toward the pail. Pig, pig, said Mr. Zuckerman in a kind voice and began walking slowly toward the barnyard, looking all about him innocently toward the backyard, looking about as if he didn't even know that a little pig was following him along beside, behind him. You'll be sorry, 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 called the goose. Wilbur didn't care. He kept walking toward the pail of slops. You'll miss your freedom, honked the goose, and our freedom is worth a barrel of slops. Wilbur didn't care. When Mr. Zuckerman reached the pig pen, he climbed over the fence and poured the slops into the trough. Then he pulled the board loose away from the fence so that there was a wide hole for Wilbur to walk through. Reconsider, reconsider, cried, cried the goose. Wilbur paid no attention. He stepped through the fence into his yard. He walked to the trough and took a long drink of slops, sucking in the milk hungrily and chewing the pop over. It was good to be home again. While Wilbur ate, Lurvy fetched a hammer and some eight penny nails and nailed the board in place. Then he and Mr. Zuckerman leaned lazily on the fence and Mr. Zuckerman scratched Wilbur's back with a stick. He's quite a pig, said Lurvy. Yep, he'll make a good pig, said Mr. Zuckerman. Wilbur felt the words of praise. He felt the warm milk inside his stomach. He felt the pleasant rubbing of the stick along his itchy back. He felt peaceful and happy and sleepy. This had been a tiring afternoon. It was still only about four o'clock, but Wilbur was ready for bed. I'm really too young to go out into the world on my own, he thought as he lay down. End of the chapter. Next chapter is called Loneliness. So I will read that one to you in a different time.